All right, so we're going to calculate solar thermal expansion tanks on a glycol-based closed-loop system. Using the calculations that you would find in a textbook, this is an example of how we can do it. First things, the equation that you'll find in the textbook uses a closed-loop volumetric expansion formula. They give us a few parameters. Their first parameter is 1.15. That means we have a 15% overview increase of our system. We're going to multiply that by the volume of the collector, which in this case is going to be five collectors multiplied by a half a gallon each. That came from the fact that there's two rough guides. You can usually do about a half a gallon per solar panel module collector on a roof, and then you can say that for every 40 foot of three quarter inch copper piping, there will be about 40 foot is about a gallon's worth. So we're going to have in this MREA solar site assessment example, there were five collectors on the roof. There was a total of 55 feet from the collector down to the balance of system. So I have a total of 110 feet. I have a total of five collectors. That means I have two and a half gallons of fluid. And I can show you, once I get all the numbers done, I can show you that the actual value of collector thermal storage is actually 0.43 of a gallon for each module. So I rounded up, but we're safe with going a little bit larger. I have 2.5 gallons, and then I have 110 feet. So that means I have 120 would give me three gallons. So I'm going to round up to three gallons of fluid that would be stored in my lines, elbows, joints, that sort of stuff. So this is a little bit low. There's also some storage maybe in the pumps and valving and other things. So we're going to want to account for that. And that's where that 0.15 or that 15% excess comes from. Now, the next thing after that in this equation is I want to multiply this by 10%. That is a rate of expansion. We know that glycol-based systems will expand roughly 10% from 0 PSI to a little bit over 200 PSI. And then we want to add, after that, the number of volume back into the collectors, which we dictated was 2.5 gallons. So that means in this complete system, I have a total of 1.15 is my expansion rate. I have a total of 5.5 gallons multiplied by 0.1. So 2.5 gallons plus the 3 gallons is 5.5 multiplied by the 10% rate of expansion is going to be 0.55. I'm going to add that now to the amount of fluid that's stored in those collectors, and I have a total of 3.05 gallons. I multiply that 3.05 gallons by my 1.5 multiplier. So I take that answer, multiply it by 1.15, and that means I have a total expansion of fluid of 3.5 gallons. Here's our first step. The first step says what kind of uh, expansion volume is this system going to see? And it's going to see 3.5 gallons. I'm going to take that answer from the first part of 3.5 gallons. And I'm going to now put it into my second sizing equation, and that is how to calculate the size of the expansion tank itself. What is the volume of that expansion tank needs to be for this closed-loop glycol-based solar thermal system? So now I'm going to multiply that by this equation right here. I'm going to take that 3.5 gallons. I'm going to take the pressure relief valve, and that pressure relief valve, in this case, let's say it is at 50 PSI. So I'm going to take 50 PSI. Now I'm going to do a little number here, and then I'm going to erase it. I'm going to take 50 PSI, and I'm going to subtract subtract 5 PSI from it. I understand that we're going to need to know what the pressure relief valve is, but the type of pressure relief valves that we are using start to crack. That means they open up and start relieving pressure 5 PSI below that threshold. So we are going to take 50 minus the 5 PSI where it starts to open, and I'm going to make that 45 PSI. I'm going to label that gauge. And then I'm going to add, I'm going to go back and I'm going to add now the equation of plus 14.7 PSIA. What that means is we have atmospheric pressure at sea level at 68 degrees Fahrenheit at 30% relative humidity. We have an atmospheric pressure of 14.7 PSI. A gauge pressure that you would read your tires on, a bicycle wheel, that sort of stuff has been referenced to zero PSI. What that means is that 45 PSIG is actually going to be 45 plus the 14.7 for a total of 45 plus uh, 15, that's closer to 60. So we're just a shade under 60 PSI. Now that 14.7 is just a little bit more pressure that those molecules are actually moving. We've 
reference it to zero for us to make our numbers and lives easier so when we put 35 pounds of air under our tire for example we've set that zero reference to be 14.7 we need to calculate that we need to know what that is so we do that for this then we're going to take that number and we're going to divide it now by the pressure relief setting which is again 45 psi so it's 45 psi and this time I'm going to subtract what the start pressure is. I want this system to be maintained at 30 PSI. I'm really going to build a 30 PSI system with five solar thermal collectors on the roof with a total gallon volume of somewhere near five and a half gallons. So that really means I have a system of, I'm going to even go higher. I'm going to go with six gallons. I'm going to have a total of six gallons in this closed loop tank. I know it's 5.5 because I've got three gallons from my piping and I've got two and a half gallons in my collectors. But the point is I'm going to even oversize that just to give me a nice note to know that I've got six gallons there. I have an expansion rate of 3.5 gallons. Now I need to know how much volume of an expansion tank to calculate, and that's what this number here is going to be. So I've got that. So it's going to be equal to these two numbers divided by one another. I'm going to bracket that in red, and then I'm going to multiply it by that. So I am going to take 45 plus the 14.7, which is just about 60 PSI, really it's 59.7, and I'm going to divide that by 15 PSI because 45 minus the 30 is 3.93. There's my multiplier, I'm going to take that value and multiply it by 3.5 gallons, and that means I have a system size of 13.93 gallons. So that should be the system size that I would need to do this. This is what I have there. So I take 3.5, I take the difference between those two, and uh, that's what I get. So th this is quite an expansion of fluid. I only have 3 gallons, but I need almost 14 gallons of expansion in here. It seems a little high for us, but those are the numbers that we're coming up with. That's what I've got with that. We'll see, and we'll go back further from there in just a minute. So I'll pull this back up, but what we've got is a couple of things. So here's what we've got. We can go now back to some websites here to see what we've got. I go to the Stiebel L Trans 25 data sheet. Now, you have to be careful. I went and just did a Google search of the Stiebel L Trans Sol 25 Plus, and I came up with the technical requirements, and they did not have the thermal value in it. I actually had to pull up the installation instructions. You go down to the section that was technical data, page 5. I scroll down to page 5, and I will find that this system right here, solar thermal value, solar thermal medium fluid content, including the manifold, is 0.43 of a gallon. We roughed it to 0.5. We're good. So we know there's about a half a gallon there. Steubel Eltran uses the Amtrol expansion tanks. So let's pull up their data sheet on their expansion tanks, and here's their expansion tank values. So you can see that the expansion tank looks like this. Inside of it is a rubber bladder that expands to keep this fluid and we need to have a system that can handle those six gallons within the system. And according to the that reference sheet, I want to use the Solar x system. And the Solar x system is going to be equal to the six gallons of closed loop system. So according to this, I need a system that had six gallons. The total system of the closed loop system that we had was six, here's one for 10. That's the smallest size that they've got. So there was a 10 gallon system and they're saying that the SE solar x system is pre-charged to 25 PSI, which is fine because we have a operating pressure that we're shooting for is 30. So we try to keep the bladder within the solar thermal expansion tank to be about what the working pressure is of the system. So we keep it about the same and it already is there. And now we can see that if I have a degree of temperature, so let's see what the highest temperature is. And it says here at 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And remember, it's not uncommon to get some of these rates of expansion here because of the stagnation that could occur in a sunny day with no power to our system. So we're saying that the SC15 can handle the amount of expansion that is required, the volume of expansion. That is what we've got. This will accept the amount of fluid required for those calculations. So the previous calculations we did came up with 13.93 gallons of total volume and amount of acceptance of 3.5. If I go back to this, that would kind of put me into the SC30. There's two ways of looking at this. One way is because of the operating pressures are a little bit higher in the way this is built, we can go 
with this SC15 because it is designed for this work and we can get by with the smaller gallon size. So this is based upon the gallon size, not based upon the volume size. The specifications, the net volume of acceptance is only 0.9 of a gallon. It only can allow two gallons of expansion. What their calculations did before this part two is that it really, it allowed us to add those added inputs to the system to get the fluid to flow through it. So that's what we have when we look at the expansion tank. So we really want this SC15 for our system. And that's how we calculate an expansion tank.